All right. So for those who will be uh, taking it some about, I find that about 60% take the class uh, live and then 40% take it on YouTube sometimes half and half or even more so on YouTube. So if you um, are taking a live class, I'm so glad that you joined me. You can definitely comment, uh, ask questions in the comment section. I'll check it out. And then if you're taking it pre-recorded on Facebook or YouTube, feel free to pause as needed or fast forward if I'm going too fast <laughs> or too slow rather. Uh, you can always, um, if you're taking it and you find it's too difficult and you wanna come back later, and take the pre-recorded class to kind of go at your own pace, uh, that's fine too. I always like to say, make yourself comfortable. This is meant to be fun and not stressful. So if you're not having fun, <laughs> get a glass of wine, get something to drink, um, make sure you're comfy. And if you are finding that you're frustrated, take a break, you can always take the pre-recorded class um, later like literally right after I um, am done with the live class. So that's always an option to go at your own pace. All right, so we're gonna get started here. We might have some people kind of popping on as we go. And we want to massage all of our icing bags, especially the ones that do not have a one on them. The one is going to be a thicker icing. Um, I like to give a disclaimer that when I'm doing my cookies, I actually do a thicker icing, but what I found in the beginning a while ago is that beginners have a very hard time with the thickness that's like typical for cookie decorating, and so your ones are going to be thick enough for outlining and designs, but easy, like thin enough that it's easy to spread around the cookie. So. Just a little disclaimer that um, typically if you are making cookies, uh, it's a little bit thicker, but of course I wanna make it easier for y'all. So the ones are a little thinner than I would normally do. Okay, so make sure you massage these. Just kind of take your fingers and sort of um, knead it like this to incorporate those colors. All right, sometimes after a couple of days, it's very normal that they just kind of separate. So we just want to kind of mix it all up. All right, this class is um, actually going to be a little bit more advanced. Not sure if you knew that, surprise! <laughs> um, it is going to be a little bit more advanced. We have, and I totally forgot to, um, I don't even know what happened to the cookies that I made. Usually I, post them like a month ahead and then I keep those cookies. They're not really edible at that point, but I keep them to show. So I actually don't, I didn't actually get them uh, this time. So if you need to pull up like a picture, if you're sort of visual and you wanna see the finished product, I am gonna walk you through step by step. So you don't necessarily need that, um, but it might be helpful if you're a visual learner to see the end product. Um, but of course I'm gonna walk you through step by step. So no worries if you don't have that. Um, but we're going to spend the first five minutes kind of just going over uh, the basics of using the icing bags, the basics of outlining. We're going to use our little worksheet, which is this guy. All right. That's the first thing we do. If you're, um, if you're already taking the class, obviously you know how this is going to roll. Um, but uh, you know, bear with me because not everybody is uh, a, re a regular or a return customer. So I'm going to just kind of set you up for success and then hopefully the first five minutes will help you for the rest of the class. Um, the hardest part about this class is going to be the writing. So if you noticed on the cookie, we have the hand sanitizer and the soap. I think that's it. Hand sanitizer, soap have writing on them. So you're actually gonna write the word soap and you're gonna write hand sanitizer. That is probably gonna be the hardest part. Anytime you get into writing with icing, it's um, trickier than using a pen. So, and then we also have to like, have a very, very small hole in our bag because we want it to be about the thickness of like a fine point Sharpie pen. So it's gonna be very hard um, but if you decide, you know what, I don't want to do that, 
I, I already know it's going to mess them up. You know, that's fine. You don't have to write the words on them if you don't want to. Um, of course, this is these are your cookies and you're the artist, so you can do whatever you want to do. Make them look however you want them to look. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, like if you choose, I don't want to do that. I'm not even going to know. I'll never know about it because uh, I'm here in Florida and you're wherever you are. So uh, they're your cookies. Do what you want with them. Okay, so let's begin by taking everything out of our box if we haven't already, which I have not. I'm just gonna kind of get set up here. You have two bags, which are going to be um, for afterwards. So your cookies were sent, oh, you have three bags, sorry. Your cookies were sent in two bags and then I gave you three extra. So these are for tomorrow when the icing is dry and you want to keep them fresh. This is a new thing I'm doing is you can stick them in the bags and um, they'll be fresher for longer. Uh, usually I say put them in a Ziploc or a Tupperware. This is gonna be much better. Just when you put it in, double fold it and put a piece of tape on it and it'll stay good for three weeks at room temperature. Uh, of course you have your extra bag for the end. Um, if we need to do a smaller hole for that writing, we'll kind of see how it goes. I might do the writing first so we can cut, we don't have to transfer bags, which can kind of be difficult. But if you do end up cutting too big of a hole, I can show you at the end how to transfer a bag if you don't know how to do that already. You're definitely gonna want a napkin because it gets messy. Um, and then your parchment paper is going to be laid out like it is on mine. You'll need your toothpicks here, all right? And then you'll need a pair of scissors if you don't have them already. Okay, I think that's everything. Um, we're gonna start with the worksheet. So, something I've been kind of telling people, I'm gonna put my hair up here, um, is using this as a scale. So, the lines, I, I'm going, to, I took some advice from my parents and <laughs> it's not like going to be completely. So what we're gonna do is, how, how big to make that hole, if this is your first time, you're going to take your icing bag and lay the tip flat and then you're going to line it up with these two lines here. Doesn't matter which two. But the tip of the plastic is going to be on the last line and then you're going to cut just under the second line. So I know it's tiny but hopefully you can see that. So you don't want your hole to be cut as big as that second line, okay? Um, if you already know how much to cut off, you've done this a million times, um, you don't necessarily need to use that scale, but if it is your first time, just think it's a very, very small amount off. You're cutting off about the amount of like a number two pencil lead um, piece that pops off of the pencil, all right? And you can also use this as a scale, okay? So wherever, if it lines up on one of the lines, then the second line, you're gonna cut just a little bit less than that width. Does that make sense? So your hole is going to be, the piece that you cut off is gonna be smaller than those two lines together. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm trying to figure out how to uh, explain it the best as we go. I've been doing this for almost, no, a year and a half now, I guess, or almost two years. And this is the first time I've thought of something. <laughs> okay, so worksheet first, we're gonna do the white that has a line on it. So that is our thick icing, okay? And then you're gonna use that as a skill, or if you already know what to do, you're gonna cut that little piece off. Okay, this, I'm working with a tiny space here. All right, so we have, our lines, which are first. I'm gonna show you how we're going to hold the bag. When you cut it, you're gonna get a flat line. So just take your fingers, squeeze it from the top a little bit, take your fingers and kind of run it through um, on all sides. So when you look at it, you see a hole instead of like a flat line. Your hand is going to go directly above all that icing. So you're gonna push this down, okay, and then you have your hand, of course. It's going to go in where your thumb meets your palm here, under the knot, but above the icing. So the knot doesn't really matter as much. Just make sure that you're above all that icing. 
And then I like to actually tuck my thumb in here and then I fold my hands over that thumb and I'll show you here. So you're here, you're on top of the icing, you tuck that thumb in, you're gonna rest your fingers over that thumb. You're squeezing from your thumb into your palm and then your other fingers are kind of helping to kind of get a little bit more of a squeeze. Um, and you just wanna make sure that you're squeezing from the top down. And then the most important thing is that you let that icing drag out. So we're not actually going to be touching the tip to the paper. The only time that you touch is when you start to kind of let it catch. Then you lift up about a centimeter or more, and then you touch to stop the line. So you start, you touch it, but then you go, whoop, you lift your wrist up, you let it drag, and then you dip down to stop. There are a lot of tips, so I'm just gonna kind of throw them at you. We're gonna start working on it, so go ahead and start. I'm just gonna throw at these all these comments at you. So your hand with the icing bag, your elbow stays on the table, but your wrist and your hand stay up from the table. So it's a little bit tricky because your, your hand is actually like all the way off of the table. Your other side, I'm gonna, there we go. Your other hand though is going to be, your wrist on the other side is going to be on the table and you can use your pointer finger on your opposite hand that does not have the icing bag to touch either the base or to touch your wrist to kind of steady it. Do what works for you, of course. Um, try some things out. Sometimes when I do a class, I don't actually even use that finger because it kind of gets in the way. Um, but you do want to practice just letting it drag off of the paper. And then when you start and you stop, you touch the paper. That's the only time. All right, if your line covers the black line, so if your white covers the black line pretty much perfectly, then you cut the right amount off and we're good. If you can still see the black line, like, and you can barely see your white line, then you got to snip off a little bit more. Um, but if you use the scale, you should be pretty much perfect. If you line the little tip up to the, the lines on the paper and then cut, you know, just a little bit smaller than that width, then you should be perfect. Okay, of course, as you go down the worksheet, um, it does get a little bit harder. These little loops are just a lot of hand-eye coordination and then making sure that you are Lifting that icing bag up, my wrist and my hand are not touching the table. I'm just letting it drag on. And then I can always, if I need to, I can use my toothpick a little bit to sort of move it to where I want it to go sometimes. You can't like drag it too much, but you can kind of like push it a little bit. And I always like to note that if you mess up at this stage, you can wipe it off with your toothpick and start again. So worksheet or you know your cookie, anytime you're doing the outline and you mess up, you can just boop, wipe it off, stick it in your napkin or eat it if you're eating the cookies <laughs> and then um, do it again. The only time that you're doing the outlining or like the detailing with the bag that has a one on it. Only time that you cannot wipe it off is at the end when you're detailing it because you already have the base there. So if you wipe it off, you'll mess up the cookie um, decorated underneath. But when you're just talking about the initial outlining, we can most definitely restart as much as we want. And we will, we will have to probably do that today because I'm going to tell you right now, our hand washing one um, is very tricky. Again, if you missed it, this is a more advanced class. So the hand washing one, as you can see, has no lines. You look at it and you go, is that a flower or I don't even know what that is. I know what it is, but and we do. But when you look at it, you're like, how is that going to be? hands washing. So we will probably need to 
wipe it off and do it again. We'll get to that, but just know that you can always wipe it off if you need to. All right, you may be ahead of me, but if you're not, I'm gonna show you something for the dots and the hearts here. So the dots, there's two ways that you can do this. I taught this in my last class. I'm gonna show you both of them. So one of them you can outline and then flood with the same icing bag. And then the other one, you can just keep the icing bag in the middle and squeeze out until you have the width of the dot that you want. So I'm gonna show you both ways. So of course it's very tiny, but the first way I can do is I can outline it and then I can just quickly go ahead and fill it in. And then the second way is I have, I sit like upright in the middle and then I squeeze until I have the width that I want. That way is a little bit easier. Um, we are gonna be using this technique for the soap. So figure out what you want, try both ways. So the first one is outline and then just spiral inside, fill the inside. Or sit upright right in the middle and then squeeze. And sometimes I kind of move it, you know, a little bit right and left to kind of help push that icing out. Um, so, you know, whatever you want to do, whatever you like this, there's no right or wrong. All right, the hearts. There's also two ways that you can do the hearts. So our hearts, uh, same concept. You can outline it and then flood it in. That way's not as fun. The more fun way is um, to create two teardrops that kind of connect at the bottom. And that also comes from squeezing until you get the right width and then dragging down to create sort of that thin line. So I'm gonna show you both ways. So wherever you're at, if you don't know what I'm talking about and you wanna go ahead and look up, <laughs> I can show you the first one is going to be the outline and then you kind of like fill the middle. All right, then the next two I'm gonna do with the teardrop way. So you sit here near the top, you're gonna squeeze and then drag down. Then the other side, squeeze, drag down to meet it. Very fun, let's do this one, squeeze, then drag down, squeeze, drag. Those are lots of fun to make, those hearts. And then what happens is you get like a very defined top part of your heart rather than if you outline it and fill it. Okay, finishing with the worksheets, we'll do the circle. I usually only do one circle because it really doesn't matter. Circle is probably the hardest thing to outline. All right, and as you are going, and if I don't always mention it, just try to remember kind of how you're holding that icing bag, you know, how you're squeezing it. Ask yourself, am I up off of the paper? Am I letting it drag? Am I breathing? <laughs> don't hold your breath. Uh, what else? T -t -t is your hand and your wrist up to kind of let yourself, you know, be able to drag that icing? I think that's it. Are you using your pointer finger to kind of steady yourself somewhere, either on the base or on your wrist? That does help. If you want to, we can do the cookies writing. We did writing in the last class as well, which was last week for the mom's class. It was fun. It was hard. <laughs> we took about 45 minutes to decorate one cookie, which was insane. Um, I think I want to go ahead and practice with the black. So this is a little different. Usually I just have you do it with the white. However, I do want to show you how to cut this icing bag. So if you haven't already, make sure to kind of knead this bag a little bit. And what we're going to do is cut off like the most tiny amount that you can while still having a hole in the bag. 
So what I mean by that is if you cut off a little bit, but nothing is coming out, no icing is coming out, then you need to cut off a little bit more. But we're gonna snip off a very, very small amount until we have an opening that is about the width of a sharp, uh, like a fine point Sharpie pen, if you know what I'm talking about. So don't freak out if you're a little nervous. Um, very, very, very tiny amount. Like so tiny that you can barely see it. And then we'll just kind of practice. So let's see if it comes out. Oh, it does, okay. So I actually got it on the first time. I was trying not to do that, but I did. So <laughs> your width of it should look about like this or a little bit bigger. That might actually even be a little too small, but no, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that's about right. So it should be about the width of this writing up here, the like print writing. Your opening should give you a width that's about the width of this writing up here, okay? And if you cut too much off, if that is you and you're like, oh boy, then that's what the extra bag is for. And so what I'm going to say now is don't worry about it. I'm gonna show you later if that does apply to you. I'm gonna show you later how to transfer it to a new bag so you can get a new cut. And if you did cut off too much, just go ahead and try, you know, practice. This is just practice for now. Just try to do it. Um, the cookies, if it's too big, it's okay, but at least you'll know for next time. And the writing, of course, is very difficult. Take your time. It's not gonna be quick and it might be a little bit hard squeezing it out because you don't have as much of an opening there. But my icing is the same as yours, I promise. And it feels about right, about normal. So it's like not too thick, but not super thin. And we want to basically be able to cover that writing on the paper. Um, I will say when I teach a class, I have about two feet between <laughs> me and like my eyes and the paper. When I'm actually decorating cookies, that's not the case. I'm just doing that because the camera's right here. But when I'm actually writing, who you best believe I am like this. Like, obviously not with it up in the air, but I am coming like down, you know, wherever I'm working on my table, I'm like super, super close. Um, I was just thinking the other day, oh gosh, my neck is gonna like stay like that one day if I do this too much. Um, and if I don't open up my chest <laughs> and do back exercises. Um, so when I'm doing this, I'm like literally, I'm making sure I am, you know, right on there because it is very fine. It's a very fine motor skill. And so it's, it's difficult. And so I would just say practice. Obviously, that's why we're doing the worksheet. See, you know, if you can get that writing to be as great as possible and then, <laughs> or as great as you can for today. And then we'll try it on the, the cookie that is mostly, it's just the eyebrows on the hand sanitizer and the toilet paper. And then the writing that says hand sanitizer. Okay, let me just finish this. I know I've been talking a lot, so you might be way ahead of me. Um, again, if you have any questions, comment as we go. I will read them and get to them. So I'm gonna finish this one right here. When you're doing your letters, make sure that you are, you're dropping down and touching the paper to start and to stop, just like I taught you in the beginning. So you wanna let it kind of catch, and then you lift up a little bit, not as much as you would before. You're, you're really staying close to that paper, but then to start and to stop, make sure you drop down to let it touch the paper. And of course, this is good to see if you cut off enough or need to cut off more. 
and I'll teach you how to transfer it later if that's you know something that's needed. Okay. I'm not gonna do the cursive because I'm not doing cursive on the cookies. You can do that if you would like to though. Of course, I'm not stopping you. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move on. That's the introduction to piping and writing 101, the abridged version. So let's transition to the cookies. Since we have our line, our thick white, what we're gonna first start with is going to be our, you know, it doesn't matter, but let's do our toilet paper. Okay, this guy is fun. He's so much fun. I say him because he's gonna have a little face. Okay, so we first have to do the outlining. We've got a few different steps for that. And then we can flood it, flood one section of it, but we're gonna first do the outlining. So we wanna create this barrier for all of that icing to go inside. And we have about three sections that we're gonna be working with. Um, so I'll just show you step by step. I'll show you, I'll show it, then you can follow. I'll leave time for you to follow it. But what we're first going to do is create this lip here, which is going to be kind of the curvature of the top of the toilet paper. So I'll do it first, but we're going to create sort of this, and it's going to go from all the way on the left to right here where it starts to kind of extend out, and that's going to be the top of our toilet paper. Okay, and then of course the easy part is going to be just completing this top part here. So we're just following the edge of that cookie. I like to get as close as I can to the edge without falling off of the cookie. But sometimes people will have the edge be very far from the um, actual edge of the cookie. Like they'll create this little space and I don't really like that. So I like to go as close as I can to kind of create this illusion that I know it's a cookie, but I'm kind of making it look more like art and not really a cookie, but I do obviously know it's a cookie. Um, so whatever you want to do though. Okay, so we're going to create this tiny little hole in the middle. It's going to be a little oval that basically mirrors, you know, this, but here's what it's going to look like and later it'll get filled with black. Okay, so if you need to do this step a couple of times, um, you know, by all means, go ahead and, you know, if you need to, if you don't like the way it looks, you can wipe it out, you know, with your toothpick and do it again, or you can also, if you wanna make it a little bit more perfect, you can use your toothpick, like I had said in the beginning, to kind of push it to where you want it to go. All right, the first segment is done. The next two are a little easier. So now we're gonna do his middle part. Okay, uh, the only hard part, so you're following the edge of the cookie on the left and the bottom, but then the right side, we're actually gonna curve it ever so slightly to match this on the left. So see what I'm saying is if I create a line that's straight, it's gonna look a little bit funny because it's not really symmetrical to the left side. So we are going to do a little curve here, not too much. And then of course we follow the edge of the cookie there. So let me show you that first one is going to be a little curved and meet at the bottom. See that? So try that. And then, of course, the left and the right. Make sure as you, since we are doing the lines kind of in steps, just make sure that each segment connects with that icing and that when you look at it, there isn't like a gap between the two sections. You wanna make sure it's completely closed in and that there's no gaps, you know, here, 
here and here where you're sort of connecting the lines. It looks like a lot of people are taking this class later. I usually have like 12 people viewing. We have 25 people in the class. So um, only a few of y'all are on, which is very different. Most people take the live class. Um, all right, so the third section, we're just finishing this little part right here. And that's easy because we're just going with the outline of the cookie. Like that. Oh, there they are. Okay. So let's let it dry for just a few more seconds. We have, you have in your cookie kit some little black sprinkles. We are going to be using these for the eyeballs. So we'll have those ready. Um, I, I'm going to probably open them now. I usually just cut open the bag instead of trying to untape it, but just make sure you don't lose those guys if you want to put them um, in like a bowl or something, which do I even have that? Let's see. A plate maybe, um, but you have more than enough. You have a few extra where you actually only need two, or well two for this, so we actually only need four total. Okay, so next up, we got those ready because we're going to drop those in when this icing is wet. So your white, go ahead and um, mix it up if you haven't already. We're going to only flood the middle part right here. It's a pretty, you know, big section. Um, and then when we're done, you know, filling it in, then we're going to drop the eyeballs in. So if this is your first time, maybe watch me first. I'm gonna cut a little bit bigger of a hole than the outline one, not too much bigger, um, but just a little bit bigger, if you can see about that much. And then whenever I outline, I mean, whenever I flood, excuse me, it's called flooding, um, we're going to go starting on the outside and either touching the outline or getting really close to it and then spiral in. So I'm okay with gaps on the outside, but then I actually want to fill in the middle completely. So then I don't have to use my toothpick as long. And when I use my toothpick, I kind of swirl it around as I push it out to the sides. And then I kind of, I might pop any air bubbles if I see any. But once it's all to the outline, then I'm good. Sometimes people will kind of shake and tap ever so slightly. It's not completely necessary, but it does sometimes help get those air bubbles out, bring them to the top, uh, but it also helps to sp spread it out a little quicker. Okay, and then we're not like in like a rush, but we just at some point within the next couple minutes, you want to drop your little eyeballs in. I actually did it like a little bit lower than halfway. This might be a tricky part. I'm just gonna literally drop drop it. <laughs> and then I'm going to try to drop this one parallel to it about half an inch apart. And then I can use my toothpick to sort of push it a little bit more in and move it to where I want it to go. If you totally bomb it and it's like not where you want it to go, don't worry, just go ahead and pick it out with your toothpick. Um, your icing is still wet enough that you can do so and not mess it up. So if you totally mess up, just pick it out, get a new um, little ball, and then put it in. Your eyes might be further apart, you know, whatever. It's all, it's art, so it's going to always be a little different. All right, now believe it or not, we're actually going to let him dry for now, because we want to uh, leave this guy to dry so that when we go to add in these, 
if you've taken a class with me before, you know that it's going to leave that definition. So if we let the one section dry, then we go to add the other one, it'll look very defined like separate blocks. Okay, so let's carefully, very carefully move him over and don't let him touch anything or be bothered by anything. We're gonna let him dry. Your white icing that's thin, um, what I like to do so that it doesn't spill out everywhere is fold that tip in and then I like to kind of roll it up to keep all that icing in and then I just put it somewhere to the side uh, but until I have to use it again. Okay, how are we doing? Y'all good? Y'all are quiet. All right, next up, we're going to do the hand sanitizer. I'm, I'm tackling all of the hard cookies first. Okay, so he is also going to get some eyeballs. Let's see. Doesn't want to focus. I'm just waiting for it to focus. All right, so he's going to get some white and some eyeballs. There we go. So we still have our white, we're dealing with the same one. Remember, pick up the one that has a line on it. And what he is going to get is this white line across. It's going to be kind of like the, um, the label on a hand sanitizer. This is like one that you see in, or one that I used to remember from like labs or like at school or doctor's offices, like the ones with like the big um, white pumps and they're like really like fat. This is that, that hand sanitizer. So what's going on here is we have this weird little thing right here is actually going to be a water drop lit, like a little teardrop. So there's that. And then this is going to be, and I'm actually going to use my, um, my food marker to show you this top part because there's going to be three sections here. So I'm going to show you that in a bit. But then this part is going to be blue and then you're going to have about mm, two to three inches here that are going to be white. And then the bottom part about a centimeter wide is going to be blue. So the first thing we're going to do is the white label. And again, since we're dealing with something that in real life is like um, obviously 3D, but it's kind of like spherical or whatever. Um, we're actually going to make the line a little bit curved so it looks like it's going around it and it's not gonna be like straight. I don't really like to do straight sharp lines um, because it just kind of looks like very rigid and I like it to look a little softer. So the bottom line would probably be the best thing to do first. And so I leave about a centimeter between the bottom and where this is going to be. But I'm going to create a sort of curved line here. Just like that. So you're mirroring the bottom, sort of, and then you're leaving a little bit of space, which is going to be blue. And we're creating the first line of the label. Again, if at any point you need to wipe it off and do it again, go for it. And then that next line, we can probably just go ahead and connect these. So we'll go up um, about, I don't really know. I'm not really best at like scale, but I'm thinking that's about like an inch and a half maybe. Curved line and then connect it down to meet that line. So I'll give you a minute to do that. And then I'll save you a little bit more time if you need to wipe it off and do it again. Let me get my food marker. I am going to actually stock up on these guys. Um, I found after like five years, I found my favorite marker. Um, it's an edible marker. Obviously I'm not using like Sharpie and it's great for creating those lines so that you know where to go um, with the icing. But I'm going to stock up on these and I'm gonna sell them on my website. They're not very expensive um, about five dollars for a pen and it lasts like a year or two 
or three, <laughs> um, depending on how much you use it. But this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to stock up on these on my website. So if you want to take another virtual class, uh, you can add it on to your cart later um, when I buy them, which will be soon, hopefully. Uh, but I'm going to use this to show you the next white lines that we're going to do. Okay, so probably the, the first thing is probably going to be the middle line, which is a little bit easy to show. So I'm going to show you this water droplet. So imagine that that's like the, the droplet that's coming out of the hand sanitizer tube. And then you see, like you can kind of see where the first, third, second, sorry, first, second, and third segments are. Let's actually do the top, change your mind. So the top is obviously following the top of the cookie, but then this guy, he kind of goes like this. It'll all start to kind of make sense, but if you imagine those like big chunky um, hand sanitizers, it starts to kind of look like it. There is going to be a little bit of space. There's some naked cookie here. But the second one is going to be a rectangle. And then the third part is going to be here. And that is our pump <laughs> top part. Okay, obviously you don't have um, this marker. So you might have to create it and then wipe it off and do it again. Or you might get it on the first try, which is great. Um, so let's do the let's do the bottom part first. So we know where the the little base kind of ends. We can just draw a line straight across there with white, and we come back. We come up about a centimeter, and we go across, and then back down to connect to that first line. So that's our first. Rectangle, I'll give you a little bit more time. All right. <clears throat> the second one, you can see it, it's going to be narrower. So we have, we know what it looks like on the right. We're gonna come across leave some space obviously we're not coming all the way over to where that bottom rectangle is but it's just a little it's like a cake right now like a two-tier cake so we have that top one is a little bit smaller um in length than the bottom one the hardest one is probably the top because you're creating sort of that little like um dip down like a waterfall All right, so let's just go for it. So we have the right side, we come across the top. And then when we come down, we're going to have a very narrow kind of uh, line here and then back up to meet that middle section. And I'm gonna um, give you a little bit of time. If you don't like the way it looks, now would be the time to wipe it away and try it again but as far as white outlining this guy will be done when you have these four segments and then what we'll do is we will flood the middle here we'll add the little eyeballs the eyeballs are going to go lower because that hand sanitizer writing is going to go across the top believe it or not <laughs> They're like, really? That's going to fit on there? So you're going to flood here. Your eyeballs are going to go sort of close to the bottom, but leave room for a little smile. Okay. And then we're going to flood the top and the bottom here, but we're going to let this guy stay um, naked and then we'll flood him later because we want to keep these three very defined. Okay, so if you're ready, we're going to flood him in the middle. Have your little eyeballs ready. Okay. 
So, here we go. This part's the fun part. Plug. Again, you can touch the outline or not. I typically do, but when I teach a class, I don't do it because it's just a little bit better for beginners. Use that toothpick. And then while it's still wet, some point between now and the next minute, you're going to drop in those little eyeballs. And then again, we want it to be a little bit lower. About like there maybe. I'm leaving room for the smile and I'm also leaving room for the hand sanitizer. And that looks kind of wonky so I'm going to push it in. So it looks about the same as the toilet paper, just a little lower. Okay, and then when you finish that part, I'm trying to give you all some time, we're gonna flood, same one, uh, we're gonna flood the top and the bottom. Very narrow, so you might not have to squeeze a whole lot in. Be very careful when you squeeze. And then use that toothpick to kind of push it into some of those corners. But drop enough in that you're not going to see that cookie underneath. Use your toothpick. If you put too much in, which sometimes can happen with the, the narrow, um, you can also kind of take your toothpick and like scoop it out. And then I use my napkin to collect that excess icing. But we're going to leave that middle part naked, as I like to say, or as I've been saying recently, I guess. Blank. And then we will let him dry for a little bit. And we'll come back and do the blue like very, very soon. Okay, we're done with the eyeballs for now, unless you really wanna draw little faces on all of them. I don't even know if you have enough for that. Um, but if you wanna draw, if you wanna put little eyeballs on the soap or the mask, you probably would have enough for that. You know, go for it if you want. It's not, I'm not going to do that, but um, it's not advertised that way, so I usually try to do it's advertised, but I did think a couple days ago, oh, that'd be kind of cute if we put little eyeballs, all, eyeballs on all of them. But for now, we're going to let him dry, so let's very carefully move him over. We don't want to mess him up. Okay. And then the next one we're going to do is the let's do the soap which just looks like an oval right now okay so we're switching colors here we have our pink that has a sharpie line on it that's going to be our thicker pink okay and then we want to cut that that uh, little hole Again, if it is your first time, use the worksheet to line it up, and then you're going to cut it a little bit smaller than the width of those both of those lines. Okay, before, I know it's been, you know, a few days, so before I go ahead and use it, I am going to just kind of, you know, take some out, put it on the napkin to make sure it's kind of coming out. Coming out all right and is the right width. And this one's easy enough. 
Uh, so we're going to start anywhere that you want, doesn't matter, and you're just going to do the oval outline. Ovals and circles are a little hard to outline, it requires a little bit more hand-eye coordination. And then you just connect it to wherever your starting point was. Sometimes I take my toothpick and kind of um, sort of like mesh the start and start the stop and starting point together a little bit better. And we want to wait a little bit for this. Sorry, I keep drinking. Last class I was like, my throat was like, what was it? It's like I was having a hard time talking like the whole class. So then this time I'm like, okay, I'm going to drink a little bit more as I go. Now I understand why public speakers, you know, um, always have like a little like water bottle. Like I remember at church, there was always like, I remember on more than a couple of occasions, there would be somebody that would run a water bottle up to the preacher because their throat would kind of start to get funny. <laughs> um, and it's like, I always was like, why do they do that? Why do they need that? And then I started teaching classes and I was like, oh, that's why. Okay, that should have dried uh, long enough. So now you're gonna switch to the pink that is uh, thinner and does not have a line on it. We're going to cut that hole um, a little bit bigger, not too big. We don't want all that icing to just like spew out. So we want a little bit bigger of a hole and then you should almost be a pro at this by now. But we're gonna drop this in here. Make sure you got enough on there that it looks like a thick, fluffy pillow on top. And this is kind of a side note, but I, I didn't really massage this one. So you might be able to see, it's not really bad, but I'm just gonna show you what you might see is you might see like sort of like you'll see the spirals of where you let that icing out. And so that just means you didn't massage it enough. So sometimes if I see that, I'll just go ahead and like take my toothpick and just spiral throughout the whole cookie. And that kind of like combines the icing. It's like I'm mixing it together while it's on the cookie. But yep. And since this is actually, I think, the only time that we're using the pink, I'm going to fold this in and I'm going to roll it up. And I'll save it for later, which I actually might not, but I'm just saying that in case you do want to save it for later, uh, when your icings have been opened and you roll it up like this, and um, you can keep it like this or you can stick it in a Ziploc, but it'll stay good for another three weeks. So if you... Um, ever have anything that you make some cookies or whatever and you want a little bit of icing on them, you can keep that for about three weeks at room temperature. Okay, we're gonna let him dry as well. Hopefully you've got a lot of space for them to dry. He needs to dry because we don't wanna put the writing on now uh, because it's just gonna collapse into it and it would defeat the purpose. So we need to let him dry so that that surface layer can harden enough that we can put that writing on top and it'll remain on top and it won't sink in. Um, but the next one we'll do is our mask. So I would say the mask is the easiest one. It's like the most beginner one. We're switching colors here, so now we need the blue that has the line on it. Okay. And 
end, we're going to cut that little hole to be um, just like we've been doing. Cut that tiny hole, not too big. Not too big, but not too small. And for beginners, most beginners, it's like you start off and you probably do a little bit bigger if you're like brand new. But then it's not always bad for it to be a little bit bigger because, again, if you think of it like a barrier, you want it to be thick enough that it'll keep all that thin icing in. Um, so it's, you know, if you cut it a little bit on the larger side, then that's fine. Again, test it on a napkin. It might be a little watery, so we want to just kind of um, make sure that that initial part is not going to be the one that goes on the cookie. So we'll make sure it's good first, and then we can do the cookie. Okay, so this one is a little easier. The only lines that we're creating are the ones on the side, so you've got the string. I like to come not like straight up, but I like to kind of curve here a little bit towards the top, and then we'll follow the rest of the cookie here. So we're leaving room for the string. This whole part of the cookie here is going to stay naked for now um, until we come back at the end and we create that little string from the thick white. But we're not doing that now. We're just going to do the blue here. And I made these this consistency a little thinner than I usually do. You might notice that difference. It makes it a little bit easier to spread. It's not gin, it's probably more of like a um, medium consistency rather than a true thickness. But it does make it a little bit less frustrating for y'all. So hopefully that is um, helpful. And so since we have this thick blue, we're actually going to bring our hand sanitizer back. And why don't we go ahead and outline him as well. And then we'll flood both of them with the thin blue in a minute. But we do want to let the mask dry for um, just about a minute or so. So we have um, three parts that we're going to outline here with the blue. And again, make sure you've got the blue that has the line on it. So it doesn't matter where you, what you do first. I'm probably going to do the bottom first. So I want to connect that blue to that white. It's going to be a very small sliver of icing. We want to outline just the bottom. You don't have to hug up, you know, next to it like next to the white. Sometimes I teach, oh, go ahead and, you know, create another line. It's um, such a light color that I don't do that. I usually only do that with really dark colors so that it prevents bleeding. Sometimes the colors, like if, if this were black um, and I was adding it, I'd probably add another line under it, but since it's very light, like a very pastel-y blue, um, even if the colors blend, it's not going to be, like if it bleeds a little bit, it won't be like very noticeable. So I can just leave it like that, which makes it a little bit easier. Then I don't have to do that extra step. Uh, the top, you're only going to do these two curved lines here on the side. So one and then two, just make sure that they connect. And then the last one is going to be the teardrop. All right, you can do one of two things. Um, if you were here in the beginning with the worksheet, remember you can outline it and flood it, or you can do the part where you squeeze and then drag. So you'd be working, if you did that, you'd be working up, like kind of upside down and you'd start here, squeeze, 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 and then drag. What I did was I did the outline and then I went ahead and flood. So I'm going to do that. So I've got the outline of my little 
teardrop and then I'm just going to go ahead and flood it with the same one. And I want enough icing on there that it looks kind of puffy. And that's it for that. Okay. So if you've got those, take your thin blue, mix it up if you haven't already, like really good because we don't want to get those like spirally things where we can kind of see where it wasn't mixed up. That's kind of annoying. It only happens when it hasn't been used, you know, right away. All right, so we want to cut a hole that's um, about, uh, like, not as big as the flooding ones that we have been doing. So I would say about how much you would do for the outline. So I'm, you know, going to use my little worksheet. So I'm going to cut, if I line it up, I'm going to cut just a little bit smaller than the width of that. It's a little bit smaller. So about what I would do for an outline. And I'll explain why we're cutting a little bit smaller for this blue. This is the thin blue. So the reason why I'm cutting a little bit smaller is because I've got these really narrow spots here like this and then on the uh, hand washing one I have small so and that might actually not even apply because we might go ahead and outline and flood just like we did with that teardrop we might do the same thing with that so that doesn't necessarily apply but it does apply to this little sliver here so anytime you're working with a narrow area you might want to cut a little bit less but let's drop it in and then you can if you want Again, I do it a little bit differently than I would do if I were actually doing it just myself. Um, but I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to use my toothpick to push it up against the white. Just make sure you've got enough in there that you're not sitting here forever doing this part. You know, it should be pretty easy to push it up to the white. And then that's it for that, for that part. So narrow spaces, a little bit harder. It helps though if you cut a little bit less so you can kind of squeeze in that little space. And then the last thing for the blue with this one is going to be here. And then it's the same, same concept obviously bigger surface area here. Make sure all of the middle is filled with that blue so that all you have to do is use your toothpick for the um, top and bottom, pushing it towards that white. You know, we don't wanna overlap it. We wanna just kinda push it to touch it, but we still wanna keep that that block there we don't want it to go like run over it and if it does you know obviously it's not the end of the world um and if that does happen and you're not liking the way it looks you can always at the end come back and uh, re-outline to kind of give it its definition again if that blue did happen to kind of like overlap onto the white too much We will keep him close because we still have to do that white here. It's dried long enough for us. Um, but since we have that blue in our hand already, we can uh, go ahead and flood him. And this is the last of the blue that we're going to use. So if you need to use it all, I don't know. I you know obviously I tried to give you more than enough icing you might have a little bit left a little bit goes a long way it's very often in classes that people will say i don't have enough and i'm like oh you got enough because you only need a little bit for each cookie so 
just want to but you don't have to worry because this is the last one of the blue we're going to do the water droplets on the um the soap and the hand washing with the thick the thicker blue because it's actually that 15 second consistency so it can be flooded and outlined with the same one And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, you can sign up for the Royal Icing class. I go in great detail about all of the consistencies and all of that. And if you missed it um, in the beginning, uh, June 18th is that class. So you can purchase a kit on Eventbrite and I'll ship it to you for a virtual class. Okay. We are kind of on the home stretch here, sort of coming together. Let's let the mask dry. And then let's flood this little white part here. And then again, we'll let it dry. All right, very tiny amount in, it's a narrow space. So just try not to overdo it. A little bit in, take your toothpick. So it'll create when they when it dries. We'll have these three separate blocks here. All right, let's keep that white. Keep that white because we're actually going to do the toilet paper okay we're gonna let hand sanitizer dry All right. and then bring your toilet paper toilet paper is starting to become not as hard to find <laughs> Um, right? I mean, that's been my experience, I guess. We, let's see, we ran out, but there was plenty at the store. Um, I'm paying somebody to the grocery shop, so I actually haven't been to the grocery store in like two months. But before, like when I was trying to get them, couldn't get toilet paper anywhere. And then recently it's been like, yeah, like they got a ton. Crazy. All right. So what we're gonna do is the side here. Okay, and then we're also going to do the outer oval, but not the middle one. So the middle one is going to get black and it's going to be the very, very last thing that we do even after the writing because then we'll cut a bigger hole and we'll add in some black in the middle. Um, but that's kind of like the toilet paper um, roll like cardboard part. It's supposed to like look like the inside of it. But what we can do is the outer oval and then the sides here. So just like we did with the hand sanitizer, you want to put enough in there that you can easily spread it to the um, the outline but then not too much that it overlaps onto the other white part or goes huh, completely off of the cookie so sometimes I just say you know for beginners put a you know a pretty puffy amount here and then let your toothpick do all the rest of the work and kind of pushing it towards the sides You can always add more in if you're kind of going along and you notice you don't quite have enough. You can always just kind of drop a little bit of more icing in there. Sometimes I definitely do that. Yeah. 
this is like my favorite water right now. <laughs> it's kind of a treat, but it's um, Hint Watermelon. Have you ever tried this? It's got like a bunch of different flavors, but the watermelon is my favorite. And it's almost like when you drink it first, you kind of like taste just water. And then as soon as you swallow it, you get this like punch of that flavor. And it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. The water watermelon is probably like one of my favorite flavors and so I have been enjoying that. Not, I really like water. I think some people don't really like the taste of water so it kind of helps with that. I do like water but then I do kind of like that that watermelon taste. So good. All right so let's do the outer part and we gonna, we're gonna leave we're gonna leave that middle part empty. So the trickiest part here is probably just when you have the segments kind of close to each other, not wanting it to like go too far over the part that's already done, you know? It's probably the hardest part really. He's almost done though, you know, once we add the little um, mouth and the eyebrows. So all he needs is the mouth, the eyebrows, and then the black on the um, oval at the top, and he's done. But obviously we gotta wait for this to dry before. And I am waiting a little bit longer for the middle part to dry before we add the, the little mouth and eyebrows. So with that being said, let him dry wherever his little safe spot is. All right, and then we got one more to outline and uh, flood here. Then we'll do a door prize, a couple of door prizes, um, and then we'll do the rest of the detailing, but I wanna kinda wait a little bit longer for them to dry before, you know, as long as we possibly can you know, we only have two hours, um, but very often when I do an order, I wait at least four hours, you know, before I do the detailing, sometimes overnight. So yeah, there's that, <laughs> but um, we don't have that time. So we're gonna do this one and then we'll take a little break. If you, you know, wanna use the restroom, get something to drink, um, whatever you need to do during that time, that'd be a perfect time. But let's do the hands first, and um, we'll outline and flood, and then we'll take a break. Okay, so you have your skin color that you chose. Um, I'm definitely not tan, but I'm doing a tan colored <laughs> right now. I don't tan, I, even when I was a swimmer for 15 years and was outside for three to six hours a day practicing. I didn't really tan, so very interesting. Um, but I did. I have a tan color. <laughs> uh, so the first one we'll do is our, our thick one, of course. So that's gonna be a one, that Sharpie line. Now, he is very tricky. So I'm wondering if I should show you with the marker first. Yeah, I'm gonna show you with the marker because then at least that kind of gives you sort of a visual. And then we'll go from there. So you can kind of see it first, try to imagine how this is gonna come together. Um, and then we'll go from there. So, so the way that it's oriented, on the top right, at about one o'clock, you know, if you're thinking of a clock, it's about one o'clock, that's going to be like a water droplet. So you want that to face just like it is here. These are the thumbs yes two thumbs and it's meant to look as if your hands are sort of overlapping like this okay so very strange uh, <laughs> a little difficult but we do have some indication on the cookie kind of where these two hands are um, and the only indication is up here where the thumbs are so I don't know if you can see this 
but you can sort of see where it kind of divots in and then it comes back up. So like this is one thumb and then this is the one in the back, okay? You can also see here, there's two little divots here. So that's the back thumb and then this starts the front thumb. Okay, <laughs> uh, let me show you here. So of course you have the hand. This is a water droplet. If I show you the water droplets, it might be a little easier. So then you have the pinky, then you have the back pinky, the ring finger, the back ring finger, the middle finger. This is a water droplet. Uh, pointer finger and also the other. And then these are actually three water droplets. I did a little circle for that and then I did a water droplet here. So those are your water droplets. And that's it, okay. For the thumb, I see this divot here. I know that this is the back thumb, but the hardest part is going to be kind of mirroring what I see and doing that front thumb. So what did I do? Well, I basically said, okay, I'm mirroring the outline of the cookie, but I know that this is the back thumb and then this is the front thumb. So we kind of want to, when we go and do it, and like I said in the beginning, you might have to outline it and then wipe it off and do it again because this is just a lot of curves. It's going to be a little tricky. I said we knocked out the, the trickiest cookies in the beginning, but I lied. This is probably the trickiest here. Okay, so we've got the thumb. And then this part's a little weird because the indication is a little... Um, different. So this line, this bump up here is actually the back pointer finger. So when you come here, it's going to be like this is the front one. And then this back here is the back one. It's, um, going to be tricky. <laughs> I'm telling you, okay, but we're going to do it. We're going to make it. Uh, I'm just showing you this. I know you might not have the marker. But let's just go ahead and do that's the middle finger that's the ring and that's the pinky and then of course you see where this is right that's the hand okay so then you have your so this one is your back finger then you kind of have like all we're gonna do when we do the outline is just like a little curve here for the back middle finger the back ring the back pinky <laughs> and then you've got your back thumb. Okay, so now you see it, right? But, obviously, you don't probably have the marker. Some of you have the marker. Um, I do know that. So let's do the probably, I'm trying to think. Let's do, with our, our thick skin color let's if you haven't already let's go ahead and cut that little hole there make sure you're grabbing the one that has a stripey line and I think what we're gonna do first is that thumb the front thumb yeah I'm gonna take out a bunch so that I get not the watery part so let's do the front thumb first y'all ready for this Okay, I'm ready. Of course though, right? <laughs> um, so it doesn't matter where you start. If you even want to come over here because that's the easy part you kind of see, you know, that's fine. It uh, doesn't really matter where you start. But we're going to mirror what we see in the actual outline of the cookie. And then you come in. So let's just do that part first. And then remember that the pointer finger, the front one is not where you see that first bump there. It's going to be just a little bit under it. And it's going to be sort of like right under where that drop, that water droplet is. So come on up and then curve a little bit to create this next 
very, you know, narrow finger. You're going to have a little bit of space, you know, not too much, um, but you do know where that middle finger goes because it has the bump up on the top, so you know where it goes. You're just kind of creating that line, but then you see that bump and then come over it and come down. Okay, again, you got a little space. And not the bump directly next to, that's going to be the back, but the, the one, just one over, it's going to be the ring finger. Okay, and then the pinky will allow us to finish so we leave room for the little water droplets and then we're just going to go ahead and meet where we started there i'm going to <laughs> give you all a little bit of time if you need to fix that front hand so it should look like Kind of an open hand like this <laughs> um if you need to re-outline it you know obviously go for it just wipe off with your um, toothpick you know just scrape it off and then do it again if you, it does not look great and then the second one might look, not look great but at some point you're just gonna have to say okay <laughs> that's it that's that's what i'm gonna get and i need to um move on <laughs> um, but I'll give you a little bit of time in case you need to correct it and then we'll outline the back hand it's obviously going to be a little bit easier because the only parts that we need to do are just these little curved lines to kind of complete that um, the little pointer finger in the back and then the thumb is the thickest part um, and then once we do that we are going to flood the front hand only. We're gonna wait for it to dry. While we're waiting for the front hand to dry, then we'll do the water droplets. We'll outline and flood with the same bag, which is gonna be the thicker blue. And then we will probably have enough time drying at that point. Um, no, actually, you know what? We're gonna take a break after that. So we'll flood the front hand after we outline the backhand, we'll outline and flood the water droplets, then we'll take a break, and then we'll do our door prizes. Then we'll come back and do all the rest. Sound good? I'm surprised at how many people are taking this pre-recorded. Like, most of the time we have a bunch of people on here, but there are not many people right now, which is um, very shocking. Most of the time there's a lot more people, so I guess a lot of people are just taking it pre-recorded. Which is fine, you know, that's the beauty of it, is you can do what you want. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do, just kind of finish the outline of the backhand. So I'm only doing the little curved part here, making sure that those lines are touching the front hand lines. And then, of course, here... I'm going a little bit out and that curve lets me know where that finger is ending and then the thumb just finishing the outline of the cookie If you're taking the class with the kit and you're watching but you haven't commented yet, 
I'd love to hear from you to know who's with me now live. So just say hi. <laughs> um, I know my parents are here, but then the other two, I don't know who else is on. So I'm just kind of curious, like, who is participating right now. Um, and then I guess the rest of y'all, like 20 people, are taking it pre-recorded. Uh, so, you know, obviously you can't really comment with the pre-recorded, but I'm very curious to know who the other people are that are taking it live. If you want to let me know who you are. Okay, so we'll do the water droplets next with that thick blue. And we're going to do it just like we did with the hand sanitizer where we outline and then we flood. Um, of course, I've got mine drawn out here, um, but it is easier now to kind of see where they are because it's just the rest of the cookie that hasn't been done yet. So we can outline and then you're just going to go ahead and flood it with a little bit of icing. Outline and then flood. And we've got six water droplets here. Something like that. Hi, Linda. Thanks for saying hi. <laughs> oh, Vanessa. Hey, what's up? Very nice. Thank you. It makes me feel not so alone. I'm not really like a lonely person. I'm definitely um, an introvert. Well, I'm like half and half, but I'm like totally fine. I could be teaching a class by myself and like totally fine. <laughs> um, but it is kind of nice to just like see who else is on taking the class. It's fun, uh, especially during this time, you know, not having as much interaction with people. All right, so our next one is going to be our very um, thin one. And so, massage it if you haven't already. Remember, we're only going to do the um, front uh, hand. And then when we come back after the break, hopefully one of you guys watching live will win a door prize. That would be awesome. I have no control over it. It's random, but, you know, that would be pretty cool. Uh, so, let's go ahead and do the um, front hand. You're going to want to do a small hole, kind of like I did with the thin blue but not too big because we have some very tight spaces. So obviously, you know, you want that icing to come out. You don't want it to be too small, but we do have those narrow spaces, especially when we do the back side. So have it be like, you know, somewhere in the middle between your flooding and your um, outline. And then when you're ready, we're going to do just this um, top hand, this front hand here. All right, so we're leaving the backhand because we obviously don't want to flood that because we won't see the distinction between the front and the backhand. And I did, definitely didn't need it enough because you can kind of see the separation. So I'll just use my toothpick to sort of like mix it together. And I want to, of course, use the toothpick to get into some of those tighter spaces here with the fingers. I just got really hungry. I'm uh, ready for dinner. Or actually it's like lunch for me. <laughs> My schedule is all over the place. I've been working at night, going to bed at like 5 a.m., waking up at 2, having breakfast, um, 
having some quiet time to myself, reading my Bible, praying, spending time with Kyle, and then uh, going on like a walk, and then I work. And then so it's like I have lunch at like dinner time, and then I have dinner at like one in the morning. <laughs> it's so weird. It's so weird, but it's like I really, I don't know, like I like it. Like I'm fine with it. And I'm doing better. Like, I don't know, like I'm just so not a morning person. So as strange as it is, it's working out fine. And I'm sure when this, when we kind of go back to more of like a, a new normal schedule, I probably won't be able to do that. But yeah. for now, I'm enjoying it. Okay, here we go. Taking a little break. So if you need to catch up, you uh, can during this time. If you need to take a little break, go for it. But we should have our five cookies outlined and flooded and we still have the detailing to do. So they're gonna look, you know, like unfinished, of course. But we will take a little break, like a very short break, like only a few minutes. So just make sure you're caught up to this point here. These five cookies. And then we'll do a door prize. And then we'll do our uh, dreaded writing and the details. But the details are fun. There's not going to be like a whole lot. Okay, cool. Awesome. Here we go. So, a couple of door prizes. Of course, the more people we have signed up, the um, more door prizes I send. So, I've got a list of people. Okay, so, what, so we'll have, um, let me see. It's like, I thought about this, but I'm like trying, I'm like, hmm, I should never mind. So I've got a list of everybody that's in the class. So the everybody who is like signed up for the class and bought the kit will be entered into this door prize. So if you missed it in the beginning, a new thing that I'm doing is called Flavors of the Week. So um, every Friday to Thursday, I have a new flavor or two that I'm doing. And sometimes it's an exclusive flavor that I won't do um, for like pre-orders or custom orders. It's just like something that I'm trying out. So this week is dark chocolate, which I've had. And then my new one is raspberry dark chocolate made with um, real freeze-dried raspberries. So good. I love that combination so much. Raspberry dark chocolate is one of my favorites uh, for combinations. And so you will get, will have um, three people will win some of the chocolate and the dark chocolate raspberry cookies for their door prize. And it's a value of about $12 or more with shipping. So yeah, very cool. Uh, let's do our little random generator. Okay, so here we go. So three people will win this. All right, the first person is Shanika. I don't know how to say her last name, but I think it's Demur. Shanika, she is a regular. She takes a bunch of classes. Um, I love that I like know pretty much everybody by name, which is awesome. I might not know what they look like, but I know their name. I see it a lot. <laughs> so Shanika, you will receive that door prize. Oh, and then the second person is Colette Mitchell. She is also a regular, takes every class with me, and has for like the last year and a half. Okay, and then we've got our third person. Is going to be Amber Serrano. I think is how you say her last name, Amber. And she um, just got engaged, well, not necessarily recently, but she is engaged and will be married soon, I believe. Um, so I will be sending Colette, Amber, and Shanika uh, your door prizes sometime next week. Probably ship them out on Monday, and you'll receive them by, like, Wednesday or Thursday. Okay. Congrats. All right.
You will find out pre-recorded, I guess. <laughs> okay. I think we should tackle these. We, it'll probably take us about 30 minutes, which is perfect, and that will end us right at 8.30 Eastern time. Yeah, it's too bad nobody that was like actually taking the live class one. Aw, I'm sorry guys. Out of my control. Okay. Let me think. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? I'm kind of leaning towards finishing this one so that we can like actually just say that we've got one done <laughs> after two hours. Uh, so let's do that. We let it dry enough. It doesn't always need like a whole lot of time, so we should be fine with that. So we're going to add in the, the icing. This is a little bit tricky. I'm going to show you. So watch me first for this because it is a little tricky because this space is so tiny right here. Um, so a lot of times what I do is I'll drop in a little icing here and then I'll kind of take my toothpick and drag. But, you know, if you don't feel confident, uh, you can watch me first. If I can, I might go here, but I think what I'm going to do is just here until it gets a little too small. And then I'm just going to drag it. It's okay if it's overlapping, but I'm going to drag some over and kind of fill this spot here. So I wanted to show you that because it is a little um, tricky. But go ahead and try that out. It's going to be the same pretty much for all five of the rest of the fingers. Kind of a similar concept where you want to flood it, try to get it in as much as you can, and then just use that toothpick to sort of um, pull, drag it. And it'll take a little bit of time to get this icing in here. But it'll start to kind of look like you've got your two hands here. once we finish and we're almost done with this one which gives us a central sense of accomplishment knowing that we have finally finished one cookie this thumb is a little easier it's a little thicker so, right. and I am done with mine, so I've got one completed. Usually in like an in-person class when we've got, when we finish one, I kind of go like, yay! <laughs> And then everybody kind of does like a little clap, and it's like, we finished one! I'm so surprised that so many of y'all are taking it pre-recorded. Wow. Such a, you know, the beauty with like these kind of things, you know, um, I had like, I did these earrings, you know, for, um, 
a DIY, it was a DIY kit from this person, this small business owner in um, Louisiana. And I think I got it like, I don't know, maybe like the end of March. And I didn't actually do it till like a whole month later. And just kind of like the beauty of it is you can do whatever you want. You can do it when it's suitable for you. And I just was so busy. So one day I finally had time and I got to do it, but yeah. All right, so we're done with this guy. I'm gonna assume that y'all are done. You can put it in your bakery box or set it aside. Set it aside for now. Okay. Let's finish the mask. I think. Yeah, yeah, we're good. <clears throat> so I was trying to look and see because I want to do, um, I want to cut this a little bit bigger. Okay. So let me just show you, you know, this is the thick white. Um, just going to show you, don't do anything yet. But if I go ahead and I do this here, it's a little too thin for my preference. Um, so I want to cut a little bit of a bigger hole to kind of give it a little bit of a bigger string in proportion, you know, to the mask. So just a little smidge, you're going to just cut a little smidge off, not, you know, too big. Um, very, very tiny amount off. Just to make it a little bit bigger. Maybe not like incredibly tiny, but you know, obviously. So the, this is going to be pretty easy, this part. We're going to just create this string connecting, you know, to the, um, the blue part of the mask. All right, and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. In case you didn't know, um, for masks, like I was like trying to figure out like um, a while ago, does the colored side go inside or outside? <laughs> and then I read this um, article that was like, show your colors, like colors outside. So um, anytime like the yellow and the blue masks, the uh, dark, the color side like goes on the outside. And I'm pretty sure when I worked at the hospital um, last year for that very, very short two months, we, not everybody showed their colors. <laughs> so it's funny, it's like you have to like research, you know, just different times, like mask wearing. Never thought you'd have to wear a mask everywhere, you know? And then have to research, how does a mask go on? All right, maybe it's just me, but I was definitely like, is it the colored side in or out? No idea. All right, so the last details for this are going to be the blue that's thick. And we're going to create four lines. The first line is going to be re-outlining just the top. And then we're going to do three lines in the middle that kind of make it look like um, like an actual mask kind of looks like sort of wrinkled. Uh, so how about we do one line, like I'll show you, then you do it, and then I'll show you the next one and you do it. So I'll pause in between. Um, but the first one's pretty simple. You're just going to go from the, like the complete top, we're just gonna redo this outline. Just make sure you're doing it with the thick blue and not the thin blue. All right, and then the next one is going to be sort of the same concept of like kind of going up a little bit, but not quite as emphasized. Um, and you're also not going to start it completely on the side. You're going to have a little bit of a space and we're going to kind of mirror the top a little bit. So it's going to look something like this. And just know this is the part that you are not able to wipe off 
whatever you put down, you know, whatever you put down has got to stay there. Sorry. The next line is going to be uh, kind of curved, but not as much as that one. So we're kind of gradually sort of um, decreasing that curve. So this one is going to be pretty much a straight, but a sort of curved line. And then the last one, which will finish this up, is going to be a curved line sort of in the other direction to kind of mirror the bottom. And then, once we've got that, this one is done. Woohoo! Let's put him somewhere safe or in our box. Okay, <clears throat> now comes the tricky part. Mm -hmm. The writing. All right, let's start with the, the easiest one. I say easy, but so we are going to, we got a couple of details here. Okay. So the first one, it looked a little bit silly if we don't do the writing on this one. Um, Cause then it's just like a pink oval. Like what is that? Uh, so we are definitely going to do the word soap on here. But let's practice on our parchment paper first, and you can use the um, pink that has a line on it. We don't need to transfer, like this hole that we have here is just fine because it's only four letters, and we want it to fit here. So we've got plenty of space. We know we don't really need a tiny, tiny hole, so we're fine. Um, I don't know if you can, I'm gonna probably, use the marker to kind of show you what we're going to do. So I did block letters, basically. And so I just did, you know, kind of close together, kind of fat. Um, I did do my A like this, and then P. Actually, I think I did a capital P. I did do a capital. Interesting. I can't even remember what I did. Uh, so I think I did actually, like, I had it all in one line, and I did the capital P like that. Um, obviously, you can do what you want. <laughs> um, if you don't like that A, you could do a capital A or like that. You know, whatever you want. Um, but let's do one time through practicing on your parchment paper. It's going to come out really easily because it's a thinner, you know, thick, but we just want, and we actually do want space between them. I just didn't realize how um, thin that is compared to what I typically do, like consistency wise. So we probably do want to create a little bit of space space so that they're not running together. So obviously something more like this where they're not touching. I don't know. Um, I'll let you um, figure out what you want to do. But when you do decide what you want to do, we will go ahead and do it on the cookie which is going to, you know, not be easy, but a little easier than the hand sanitizer, that's for sure. 
So when you feel comfortable, um, somewhere in the middle, you know, we're gonna write soap. So no better time than now, let's just <laughs> tackle it. It might not look perfect, and that's okay. You know, a lot of times with the writing, um, I use a projector, so when it's like a custom order, I'm not really freehanding it. Sometimes I do, but majority of the time I'm not freehanding. I am tracing. Uh, so, yeah, I think I said this in the last class. Of course, we did, you know, freehand for that class because we don't have a projector uh, for all of you. So, you know, I mean, it's not going to look perfect because it's not, you're not, you know, you're not tracing uh, a writing, but. As long as you can see, it says so, cool. <laughs> Be happy with that. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is create dots of blue icing, just sort of sporadically throughout to create sort of this little bubble look. Um, so yours might look totally different than mine because we're just going to randomly put these bubbles in different places. Remember at the very beginning, which was almost two hours ago, um, I showed you that you can outline and flood if you want. So that would be like this and then flood. Or you can just have it somewhere in the middle, squeeze and then pull up when you're done. So like down here, I can squeeze, create that circle or I can, you know, outline for the really tiny dots. There's really no need to do the outlining, so you might just sort of, you know, dab the little dots on. And so what I did is I kind of had some that had like a cluster of three, some of uh, two, you know, some just like a little single dot. And, you know, once, once I kind of look at it and I feel satisfied with how it looks, then I'll stop doing the dots, the bubbles. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm good. I think I like that. I think so. So. I keep looking at it and going, well, I think it went a bubble there and a bubble there, and yeah. <laughs> okay, I gotta stop. I'm bubble the whole thing. All right, so. The good news is, uh, once you finish this, we are more than halfway done. So we'll have our three cookies done and two to complete, and we will finish in about 10 minutes here, which will be right on time. Yay! So the soap is done. <laughs> The next one that we're going to finish is going to be the hand sanitizer. Okay, so if you have your black from the beginning, remember we practiced on the worksheet. So we have a very tiny hole in it, which is what we want. Perfect. Um, you may totally opt out of doing this, which is fine. Um, I don't blame you, but if you want, 
what we're gonna do, so pretend like this is our little guy, his little eyes, kinda. Uh, so we're gonna give him a mouth with the fin, so his mouth's gonna be kinda like that. And then we're gonna have his little eyebrows. So here's a trick when you're doing eyebrows. If you slant them to the side, it kind of makes your, whatever your creation is, look a little bit more innocent. Um, like if I were to kind of like have like a very like defined eyebrow, um, it kind of looks a little bit less innocent. So sometimes I kind of curve it and then I sort of like have it slanted. It gives him sort of this little like, oh, like cute innocent. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, then hopefully, uh, if you want to go for it, go for it, but you don't have to, but your hand sanitizer is literally going to be, you know, black letters, you know, hand sanitizer, somewhere, obviously I'd probably make it more, um, but it's hard to know that, you know, when you don't have a projector. So, um, you know, what we're gonna do, <laughs> I'm a little nervous because I have to actually do the writing. I don't get to opt out of it because I'm gonna actually do it. Uh, that's what was advertised. So if you don't wanna do that, you can just watch me as I nervously do it. Um, but we are gonna do the eyebrows and the mouth. So let's take our little guy. And let's give him his little eyebrows. Um, at this point, if you did cut too big of a hole in the beginning, I'll quickly show you how to correct it. Just in case that's you. I mean, mine's good, but just for teaching purposes. Um, what you're gonna do is you're going to take the one, the icing that needs to be um, transferred and you're gonna cut a pretty big hole in it, like that big. You're gonna stick it inside of your new bag all the way to the bottom. And you're gonna hold it in one hand, um, hold it like right at the tip. And then with this hand, you're gonna squeeze it out. So you're going to take it from the top and I'm going to squeeze as I pull with my right hand, I'm squeezing out with my left. And it might <laughs> take a few times Now it's all in here. You can cut it, fresh start um, to get that tiny hole. Take a knot, knot it here. And this is only if you cut off too much in the beginning. Might not apply to everybody. And then if, you know, obviously you just did a redo, so be very careful to make sure that you don't cut off too much because that was your redo. And you want to make sure you got that small amount. Okay, here we go. Oh boy. Smiley face. Not perfect, but um, it's all good. Sometimes I take my toothpick and just sort of um, push it, you know, if it's not quite perfect. Um, and then you're going to do your eyebrows. Okay, if you um, decided to do it, <laughs> what to do it? If not, you can uh, watch me if you want. Okay, <clears throat> here we go. It's not going to be perfect because I usually do this with a projector. I'm not going to talk because <laughs> it is quite hard to talk and do it. It's not quite coming. Let me recut it. 
it's not quite coming out right. Sometimes it just needs to be cut a little bit more straight or a little bigger. Most people hold their breath when they do this um, because it's very <laughs> concentrating. Take your time. I did cut a little bit bigger. Um, as you can see, to make it a little easier, I'm talking so slow, sorry, <laughs> to make it a little bit easier on me, um, but it is, it does take time, it does take time, hand sand, like am I spelling it right, I think so. I'm also like really um, tucking my thumb in to get like a better squeeze here. I think it'll fit pretty much perfectly. I might be a little bit too much over to the right. That is an ugly looking Z. Oh well. <sighs> Ooh. <laughs> there we go. And then I can use my toothpick to correct some mistakes if I need to. I'm pretty happy with that though, to be honest. Okay, I forgot that I actually did include little cheeks. Uh, and we're gonna do the same thing on the toilet paper. So for his little cheeks, I did little hearts. And I did them in the way that I showed you in the beginning where I did a teardrop, like drag, so squeeze and drag down. And it's a very, very tiny amount. And I gave them these little heart cheeks. So it was a little difficult, but he is done. And we've only got one more. All right. Uh, if you're still working on your hand sanitizer, if you're pre-recorded, go ahead and pause. But I do need to get the um, toilet paper one shown and then we're all done. So toilet paper, same thing with the eyebrows and the, um, the mouth. The good news is we're not writing the words toilet paper. So we give him those little um, innocent eyebrows and then he's gonna get a little mouth and the little cheeks. And then we'll only have one more thing. After that, so I'm gonna give him his little cheeks, hearts, or just circles if you don't wanna do hearts. Okay. Um, and then you're going to, last thing, very last thing, you're going to cut, since we're all done, you're going to cut a little bit of a bigger hole, not, you know, too big, but about um, like that much. And we're going to just fill this middle part in with the black. Squeeze out quite a bit. 
And then if you want, you can use your toothpick to sort of um, make it go where you want it to go. Okay, and that's it. <laughs> oh boy, that was not easy. Not easy, but very cute, very fun. And we got our little COVID-19 survival kit here. Make sure to wash your hands. <laughs> um, so funny. Use your mask. And that's it. Okay, so uh, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you had fun and that you learned a lot. And, you know, if this is not your first time, hopefully you learned some stuff as well. And just continue to practice if this is something that you like and you enjoy. Um, even if you, you know, don't enjoy really doing it, but you have fun with the classes, uh, come back and see me. I've got some more virtual classes coming up in June and July, about, you know, two classes every month. Um, I'll have some pre-orders for Father's Day cookies as gift sets posted um, probably by uh, this week or next week, like probably by tomorrow, Sunday, sorry, I keep thinking it's Saturday, Sunday or next week. Uh, so stay tuned for that and uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments and hopefully you had fun, enjoyed it, and you can enjoy eating your cookies uh, this week. Remember that you can put them in the bags, they'll stay fresh for up to three weeks. Just don't put them in the bags tonight. Let them dry overnight. And then tomorrow, um, if you're not going to eat them right away, go ahead and slip them in those bags. Uh, double fold it on the top. Stick a little piece of tape on it. You can give it as a gift. You can save it for up to three weeks and um, enjoy it You know, later if you want to. So that's it. And uh, thanks so much for joining me. And uh, talk to you all soon. Bye. once I do this.